Ronnie had suggested bringing me in to replace Bobby Nesbitt, who was gone for the summer. I was now working four nights a week, Gideon Lowry at the piano, serving up Irving Berlin, George Gershwin, and Cole Porter. I looked at my watch. It was 8.30, the dinner hour. I went to pee, and when I came out of the restroom, only three people remained as I made my way back to the piano. The piano thumper had left with his squeeze. I sat down, struck a couple of chords, running through my mental list of tunes, then someone touched my shoulder and said, Mr. Lowry? I looked up. A woman wearing a beret and sunglasses, her lips the color of a plum, stood beside the piano. Gideon, I said, continuing to play soft chords. What can I do for you? You are the private detective? Her voice was faintly husky, a certain breathless quality to it. I liked it. I said I was. I'd like to make an appointment with you. No problem. People hadn't exactly been beating the door down for my services recently. Tomorrow morning soon enough? The woman inclined her head. I couldn't see her eyes. She seemed nervous, though, and young, standing there gripping the edge of the piano. A kind of charged force surrounded her, I thought, like the distant, mysterious hum along a power line. Is nine o'clock too early? I can be there then. You know where my office is? She nodded. She wore a tunic top with a clerical-style collar and black tights. Trim. On some impulse, I changed keys, striking an E-flat chord and softly began to play night and day. The woman in the beret started to turn away, then cocked her head to one side, listening. What's your name? She didn't seem to hear me. Or if she did, she was ignoring me. A microphone rested inside the piano, and she reached in and picked it out, and tapping her hand against her thigh, she began to sing. You are the one. She turned it into a torch song. There was a hush in the bar as the three people who remained turned their attention to this temptress who was dragging the notes of the song up and down over hot coals with all the yearning and burning inside of her, holding the final note in an uneven tremolo. When she was done, no one moved. Her spell was cast. She dropped the mic back in its place, touched a finger to her lips, and walked out. I stood up and went to the bar. Who was that? I asked Ronnie. You don't know Asia? Asia who? Just Asia. Like Madonna, no last name. I wouldn't have recognized her until she sang. What a voice. Can you believe she just walked in here like that? I went back to the piano and played my heart out, but it wasn't the same. The music had gone out the door with the scamp of a girl in a black beret. At two o'clock in the morning, I made my way home by bicycle along the shadowy streets, the smell of stale beer from the downtown bars mingling with the heady aroma of flowering frangipani. Home was the upper end of Duval Street, Main Street the raucous, rowdy, carnival-like strip of bars and t-shirt shops and food emporiums where tourists prowled endlessly and whose face changed to satisfy every passing fad. I was an anachronism, a dinosaur on a street of dreams that stretched thinly between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean.